The waters of the Pacific Northwest are one of the richest waters in the world and are home to an amazing array of life, including fish, invertebrates and marine mammals. Stretching from Oregon to Alaska, this area is a world-class destination for nudibranchs and sea slugs, where an amazing variety of species, sizes and colors can be found. The Polycera tricolor, or three-colored nudibranch, averaging half an inch in length, and the larger opalescent nudibranch, are neighbors to giants like the Lewis moon snail and the orange peel nudibranch. Then there are the odd-looking hooded nudibranch, the very well camouflaged striped nudibranch, and many, many others. The cooler waters are also home to an often seen, yet underappreciated animal, dendronoted iris, or giant nudibranch. The giant nudibranch is amongst the largest species of nudibranchs in the world. It averages 3 to 4 inches in length, but can grow to twice that size. The name nudibranch comes from nudi, meaning naked, and branchs refers to the gills or gill tufts these animals have on their back. In the Pacific Northwest, this animal is amongst the most commonly observed species by divers, and comes in a range of colors that shifts from white and gray to orange and even red. The color variation probably relates to the color of its prey. The animal has long and colorful appendages on its back called serrata. This species is also identified by the white line running all along the foot of the animal. These characteristics themselves don't make this nudibranch special. Rather, it is their incredible ability as hunter and skills to escape, adapt and reproduce that make these nudibranchs a treat for the patient and inquisitive diver. The giant nudibranch is found almost exclusively on sand and mud bottoms. Only its cousin, the giant red nudibranch, is found on rocks and other hard substrates. The sandy bottoms of the Pacific Northwest are often considered boring and empty. But this false perception is easily contradicted by the vast array of animals that have made the sand and mud flats their home. They are mostly specialists and are well adapted to survive here. It is one of these specialists, the tube dwelling anemone, that the giant nudibranch is most interested in and feeds on. The nudibranch has no eyes, but it relies on its so-called rhinophores to detect its prey. Rhinophores are receptors that the nudibranch uses to pick up the chemical signals it detects in its surroundings. Once it has detected prey, the approach is slow and meticulous to find the exact location of the anemone. Although the anemone cannot move, it has some defensive tricks up its sleeve. The tentacles are full of stinging cells and can deter potential predators who come too close. It can also retract itself quickly into its vertical tube buried in the sand, thus placing itself out of the reach of a predator. However, the tactics of the giant nudibranch have adapted to this. As it approaches, it gets a warning from the anemone and the sting it receives seems to hold off the nudibranch. In fact, the stinging just confirms the presence and location of the nudibranch's prey. To get to the anemone before it has a chance to retreat into its tube, the giant nudibranch starts to rear up, its head reaching well above the anemone. Looking like an undersea dragon with its serrata waving in the water, it hovers for a few moments above its prey and then dives down with a surprising speed towards the anemone. The anemone realizes the danger, but is too late to react. The nudibranch gets a hold of it and is rewarded with a bite of the tentacles. In some cases, the nudibranch's hold is so solid that the retreating anemone will pull the giant nudibranch far into its tube. In fact, this pulling accelerates the descent into the tube. However well adapted this method of hunting is, it is not always successful, and this one clearly misses the target. The giant nudibranch is not without enemies itself, and like everywhere in nature, it is often a case of eat or being eaten. The rose star is one of the species that readily feeds on the giant nudibranch. It is also a specialist of sandy bottoms, although it can adapt to many different substrates. Despite the slow speed of the giant nudibranch, it is not easy prey. It has the ability to take off from the seafloor and with undulating movements of its body, it can, like a dragon, fly and get away from its hunter. It is a good way to escape as the rose star can't swim, but not always successful. 
This giant nudibranch did not get away quick enough. Another amazing aspect of the giant nudibranch's life is the reproductive cycle. As with most nudibranchs, the giant nudibranch is hermaphroditic. This means that it possesses both male and female sex organs. This is an advantage as it makes it easier for the animal to find a suitable mate. During mating, two animals will cross-fertilize each other with sperm. The animals are positioned side to side and sperm is exchanged through a special organ. After fertilization, the giant nudibranch, like dragons, will lay its eggs. They are laid in a string and the white egg mass looks like a bowl of noodles. Nudibranch eggs are very characteristic for each species and can be easily identified. The eggs are generally laid in a suitable place, but this nudibranch isn't choosy, so almost any place will do. The development period is short and influenced by water temperature. Parental care isn't exactly the giant nudibranch's forte, and eggs are left to hatch on their own. However, their toxicity will prevent most predators from feeding on the protein-rich egg mass. There are, however, always exceptions. So the next time you have a chance to see this exceptional animal, take the time and hopefully you will witness one of the great moments of these underwater dragons.